we are today. Uh, training session for this Myers inverter. This particular session is for informative purposes only and should be done so by qualified personnel. Here, the unit, it is open for display and you have different sections on this unit. You have a battery section, you have a panel section, and you have the inverter. Right now, the unit is open for ease of display. And we'll be going over the basic functions of the unit. First, we are going to go a little bit over what comes for the unit for ease of operation is this folder which has the Alesco 1-800 number on it with the serial number of the unit. Inside the folder, you got two sections of paperwork. One is a maintenance contract worksheet, which can be filled out and sent in to expedite the process of maintenance for the unit. Further details can be discussed with the office upon calling the 800 number. The second section is a quick start guide relative to the unit. And those are excerpts of the actual user manual, which is located in this folder. So to recap, the user manual is in this folder here, which is located in the door of the unit. The top page is basic electric and battery safety, which should be read and maintained and adhered to for your own safety. Second page is a description, short description of the unit, along with display functions and optional features. Down here, there's a section, which are the alarms in the unit. When the unit alarms, these can be referenced to and referred to when calling a hundred number. Second page is a blowout of the unit, similar to the unit at forehand. The blowout describes different key features of the unit, similar to the panel, the batteries, and the actual construction of the unit itself. A quick informative about this unit is that for the most part, it stands by until there's a power outage. Once there's a power outage, it transfers immediately. It starts to draw from the batteries through the inverter, through a transformer in the back, which converts it to the final voltage that goes to the output of the unit. When the unit senses voltage again, utility, it'll transfer back and provide the potential available for all your loads necessary at the output panel of the unit. The next section is a startup and shutdown procedure. Shutting the unit on and off is quite simple and involves CB1 input, installation switch. The procedure is outlined in a startup and shutdown procedure for starting up and shutting down. Improper procedure can cause problems such as blown fuses. The unit batteries themselves are rated for three to seven years lifespan and the coefficient temperature is important for the lifespan of the batteries. That temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The colder it is, the weaker they act. The hotter it is, the more quickly a sulfate and dry up. Maintenance is crucial to the lifespan of the unit. Maintenance as required per NEC is minimum of one year by a certified body. 
maintenance involves simple task of running the unit under load as available to exercise the batteries and the unit itself. The actual unit itself has a built-in self-testing procedure as well. Five minutes per month and 90 minutes per year. The unit display is used to display different functions relative to unit, including logs and time. You can access it at any time. And for instance, you can see voltages and temperatures and the time the unit has run. You can also see the logs such as test logs, event logs, alarm logs. Alarm logs hold alarm faults that have been recorded by the unit. In this instance, we have a utility fault. Utility is a power loss and on this unit is qualified as a fault and shall be recorded and kept track of. During factory maintenance, these logs are erased and recorded for future reference. The current alarm will be displayed on this alarm screen. For example, a simulated outage can be used to demonstrate. Now there is a utility alarm. Once utility has been restored, the unit will sense it and there will no longer be a current alarm. But in the alarm log, that alarm shall be noted. The user menu is useful for changing time, date, and setting up the self-testing dates and times. Left, right, left, right is the password. The time has been changed in accordance already. And the monthly test time and dates can be changed as well. Further scrolling reveals options that have no need for change except for calibration purposes only and have already been adjusted for factory. Status shows you your scrolling status screen. Line present tells you you have utility available on site. Battery charging tells you your battery charger is online and functional along with your electronics. System ready tells you that your batteries are optimally charged. Any event of an extended power outage, the unit may display system not ready which means that the unit still can run, but the batteries may not hold maximum charge to provide the 90 minute runtime of the unit. System info shows you your part number and serial number, but in the event that this unit were possibly to fail, the unit has an affixed label from the representative Alesco and it has a serial number and a factory startup date, which can be referenced too when calling a hundred number. The unit has a UL label, which gives all the pertinent information for the unit. Input, output, battery info, and runtime, and of course the UL listing on it. As referenced before, the unit has many alarms it could store in its database. Two alarms are ones that should be checked up upon immediately if they happen. 
One is runtime, another is overload. Those two alarms are self-latching and the unit has to be reset in order for the unit not to have those alarms. Because if there's a power outage after those alarms have been latched in, your load will be dropped the moment the unit inverts. And in order to do so, to reset the unit, you have to follow the procedure to bring the unit offline and online. Bringing the unit offline is a simple procedure as per outlined. Mostly the installation switch can be used to bring the unit offline. To bring you back online, you turn the installation switch back on. And while doing so, the loads should be off and once the unit is back, back online, you can safety your unit and you could therefore re-enable your loads. The unit will then be back to normal once we have gone through and you can verify by checking your alarm status and if necessary, you can self-test the unit. This self-test was started to demonstrate what the self-test function works in the unit and exactly what it does during the monthly and the yearly. Once it concludes its run, it transfers back to normal and then it goes back to standby. And this concludes this training session for this unit.